Hello, I'm Rod Sampson, the US agent for Brunton's Propellers. In this video, we're going to show you how to put the blades back on the final part of the rebuild. Okay, so we're now in the home stretch. Um, we've got the hub, we've got all the races in. The last thing to do is to take your blades, and I think you can see this on the camera, but this one is actually numbered here. Uh, it's got the number there, AP7355RH, right hand, and it has a number one on it as well. So it tells you what the, um, uh, the blade numbers were. So when we took it apart, if I've got my little cheat sheet here, uh, I wrote down um, what the blade numbers were, and then I actually there's a centre pop on the hub, there wasn't normally a, a mark there. Um, so I'm just going to correlate, so I know now that this one and this blade here uh, went together. This is important because when they're assembled, um, they're dynamically balanced in the factory and you can't actually get this done anywhere in the world. It needs a special jig, so if it, if it, if it does have a, a vibration or anything that needs chewing up, it does in fact, you ha unfortunately, have to go back to the factory. So it's always a good idea to keep track on these things. Okay, so the next part is to take the uh, the bearings that we took out before. We've got the braces on either side. It just sits in this little track, and we need the uh, thrust bearing, sorry, the taper roller bearing, and this is just going to sit on top of the blade. And this is a very, very straightforward um, part. Again, it's just being organised and just holding everything together. So we've got you can see there, there's a the little race inside. It's just going to sit very snugly on top. Now the problem you're going to have is the lip seal has not been pressurised, so it's nice and springy. So it won't sit flush on the uh, race, so it feels like it'll rock um, and just have a little bit of play on it. So uh, that's kind of normal. So just sit it over. You can, you can feel where the races are, like so. And then this one's just going to drop in. So again, the uh, the narrow end goes down. Oops, the narrow the narrow end goes down. And it's just going to drop in, and again, <laughs> making sure it sits nice and snug. And you can see straight away, it's behaving like the autoprop again. So the next stage, once we've done this, is to take the lock nut and the, um, the lock screw. And the kit comes with the... Um, with, with Loctite as well, so you can see this. Yes, yeah, the uh, so it's the blue Loctite, and I can't unfortunately do this on camera. Um, this little uh, pipe vice is held on by pistol clamps at the back here. I need it to be in the workshop overhanging my bench so I can fiddle around. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put these on now and explain how it all goes together. But the main point for this stage will be you take your Loctite and you've make sure that as you've cleaned it all up, the threads are clear, clear of, um, of grease and then the nut, again, everything else is, is clear of grease. So you'd coat the nut and remembering which way it goes on. Um, and remember, you don't want to get any of the Loctite inside into the bearing. Uh, it's very important at this stage. Um, apologies, I can't actually show looking down on this one, it's just looking across, so hopefully you get some idea. Um, and then the nut just screws on. Now again, remember this little tool. So this one sits on here and you're going to engage this until it starts to tighten. Now the instructions call the blade rocking. You can see it's just rocking on its seal. So we need to just to keep going and keep in checking that the um, the blade is free to move. I'm going to switch over to my torque wrench. Oops. So that one just sits in like that. It's getting a little bit tight there, so what I'm going to do now is uh, just set my torque wrench. So this one here, we're going to set it for uh, 15 Newton meters. Now in the instructions it says 20. I like to do it just a little bit, be a little bit below, just so we can feel how the blade is, and then um, and then beef it up. Let's see how we go. So 15. 
So that is around about 140 inch pounds um, for the Imperial, the SAE guys. So this is just a, a little um, 20 inch to 200 inch um, pounds torque wrench, uh, just off Amazon, very inexpensive, and it's going to do the job. So let's see if we can get it to click on camera as we tighten up. And again, this might, yeah, it's going to start to uh, destroy my set as it were. We'll see how it goes. It's going to keep turning. Okay, so you'd keep going until you get your torque wrench to make the click sound. Once you've done so, just make sure you've got no um, 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 Loctite um, oozing out. And once you've done that, and the blades are nice and free, and they should fall under their own weight, these are a little tight there. Um, the locking screw goes in. Now this is, um, I made the fatal mistake there. So on the back there, it's got an LH. I always thought when it came, it was it says H7. <laughs> it doesn't. It says LH because it's a left-hand thread. So this is going to go backwards to what you'd normally do, uh, just so it locks it in place, like so. And again, this is the little tool that we took it off um, earlier. Uh, if you remember, I just uh, cut down the pegs a little bit for this one. And it's going to start to get a little bit awkward. Okay. That one does actually feel too tight at the moment. So let me... Okay, so again, I'm just doing this for camera now, so it, it should be a little... Okay, so it should, once it's greased, when the propeller's on its side, the blade should fall under their own weight. That's how you typically know that they're set correctly. So. We've put this on to the correct torque. We've got a little um, tab screw here. Again, it says LH on, which means it's a left-hand thread, um, not to be confused with H7. We don't actually make a H7 auto prop, but uh, so yeah, it's a left-hand thread. So imagine you're taking it off and it will just go on. And then what you would do now is wind that on all the way I'm not going to do that for this one. It's just a little too tight for there. Then once that one's on, the only thing left to do, once you've got the Loctite on the um, the lock nuts, the Loctite on the uh, lock screw, and it's all tight turned up, and you've got the uh, the blades fall, just, just nice under their own weight. It's a case of putting the um, bearing cap. And this sometimes takes a little while to rotate and to get into place. Putting the bearing cap back on. And that's one blade complete. So the trick now would be to um, do the other two blades. Again, this normally overhangs the bench. So I'm able to um, take it off. And I can rotate it round as the other blade hangs. Let's see if I can do that one. So this blade would be free, and then the next one would be again to put the race in. Gently locate the blade, drop the thrust bearing, sorry, the, um, the taper roller bearing inside, get it to locate, 
Now we take the Loctite, put the Loctite inside the nut, inside the, the lock screw. Again, with the writing side down, as the writing side up, sorry, with the circlip side up, it just sits inside. Nice and gently. It's a very, very fine thread, this one. Again, get this one to um, to locate down. Get it to lock in place. Make sure the blade's not rocking. Tighten again. Tighten, tighten, tighten so that it sits on the lip seal. Once, you've, once it's tight, you're going to take your torque wrench. Set it to 15 newton meters. Locate it on the groove. Go in, yes, yeah, so there it is. Tighten away till it clicks. Once it's clicked, check that you've got no rocking on the blade. This one still has, it's not tight enough. And that it falls under its own weight. And again, and then you would. Once that's complete, again, screw in the lock screw, the tab screw. And once the tab screws in, I forgot to mention that one. So the nut has four little holes to just to locate the uh, the socket. But the idea behind the the um, tab screw is that once this is set to the correct torque, um, what you're going to do is take a screwdriver and you're going to fold one of the little um, tabs into the little grooves, and it just helps to stop um, the, everything unwinding. And this is the reason why we've got a right-hand thread and a left-hand thread. Uh, we've got the Loctite, and we've also got a, a little tab screw. You can put one or two, it doesn't really matter, um, just to stop it spinning off. So we just, I guess it's called belts and braces, to, um, to keep it all together. Okay, so that's the second one in. Once you've done the second one, again, um, the blade cap goes back on, screw that down, nip the o-ring seal up, and then the final part, if I can do this on I'll see if I can do this on the side, so you can see this up, what I'm doing. Yeah, one of the hardest parts in doing this is actually handling it, so it's, uh, it's, it's, it is quite a challenge. So the last blade, Again, we've got the race. So the race goes in, nice and snug. The blade's going to sit on, if I can get that to stay, no, it's not going to stay. So the blade sits together. Obviously, I'm just trying to do this with the camera so you can kind of see inside. So it all comes through. Take your taper bearing, again, the right shape, it slides in, that all goes together, and this fancy uh, lock nut again, the writing side up, that one gets located in there, let's get it all hand tight. Then again, tab screw. Imagine you're taking it off to put it on, so it's a left-handed thread. Again, these would all have Loctite on. Lock that one down, bend the tab screws down, making sure that the, the blades move freely. And then you would stick the, the blade cap once you're happy. Okay, so we have a fully assembled propeller. Um, the last thing to do now is to uh, grease it and put the zinc on. Um, so we're going to take the little um, the grease adapter. Again, M5 to NPT. Um, all these little grease ports, we've cleaned them out. They're all free of grease at the moment. Um, we just fasten this one on. It's an M, I say M5 thread. Screws into the grease port. You take your grease gun. Just a standard um, NPT fitting, um, fasten it to the um, um, adapter nozzle. Just a standard NPT uh, nozzle. Fasten it to the adapter, 
And once it's locked in place, pump, pump, pump until the grease comes from the centre of the hub. Then what I do is I rotate the blade backwards forwards a couple of times just to make sure it's all worked around in all the grooves and then I would um, pump 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 again until it came out again. Um, back off uh, the adapter nozzle and then you take um, one of the o-rings there, I think you see that, and one of the screws it came. Okay just roll that over nice and gently and then you would just take the iron wrench, screw it all in, screw it together, and then you would repeat that for all the all the three blades. So once you've got it greased, it's all nice and clean now, so we don't need to worry about any um, making sure you've got a good connection. Um, and it just sits on top. Again, it comes with our little nylon screws there. Uh, one, oops, two, three. You put all three on, and once they're tightened up, you just back. One. Two. Oops. What's that one? Right, one more. Three. Okay. There's no need to over tighten them. They're, they're only, I say, a nylon screw. And the idea behind them was we used to use um, stainless, but the zinc is very thin here and it wears very, very quickly. So the trick is um, to get it to last as long as the, uh, the haul out period. So we've worked out that this will last you a, typically a year, year and a half for regular haul out. Um, and uh, it shouldn't drop off and cause you any problems. Um, and that's basically it. So we've, um, we've rebuilt the propeller and we've greased the, greased the blades and we've popped on the zinc. So the propeller now is uh, ready to splash and should give you um, years and years of trouble-free sailing until you um, check it again and decide whether it's uh, time to repeat the process. But as you can see, it's a very, very straightforward process. Um, on camera it's, it's looked a little cumbersome at times and I'm sure in the yard it would also be a little cumbersome. Um, it's all about having the right tools and just knowing how to hold the propeller, um, having to torque wrenches. Most of these little um, tools, like I said, you can probably make yourself. Um, the, the, um, the nut spanner was, was quite crucial but I think the most crucial was having a little torque wrench just to set the blades and to make sure they fell. Um, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, um, please feel free to click on the subscribe link in the bottom right hand corner of this video. Um, we post regular uh, tips and tricks on maintaining your autoprop, your Verifold or your Sigma Drive uh, three products from Brunton's Propellers which we sell. Thanks very much and see you around.